Let's get into the investigation and the attack itself with Ryan Morrow, national security analyst with Clarion Project and a professor of counterterrorism at Liberty University. And Ryan, fair to say that this does meet all of the descriptions of what a terror attack is? Oh, I, absolutely. And I've got to say, listening to the quote from President Trump, uh, he really is just plain wrong. Uh, in his assessment of the threat from white supremacists, neo-Nazis. Uh, statistically, yes, the threat's absolutely increasing. Uh, and there is a temptation on the part of some people to just look particularly at the manifesto and say these are the ravings of a crazy person. But I've got to tell you, uh, the investigations and, and research that we've done, those, ra those types of uh, thoughts are pretty widespread on the internet. I mean, this guy who carried out this terrorist attack is reflective of a broader growing movement. So it's not just some crazy guy that's just randomly appears in a large population. And Ryan, we're looking at some live pictures now of the main suspect. He is appearing, it is now Saturday in New Zealand and he is appearing in court. Uh, they have blurred out his face, but this is a live appearance that he's making. The pictures we're showing now. To your point, uh, in terms of white uh, nationalism and white supremacism, um, it does seem like, I mean, so much of the United States, at least, has been focused on radical Islam, but it does seem like white supremacism now is, is a very violent threat just in and of itself. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, I'm usually in the media talking about radical Islamic threats, and that's been our main focus at Clarion Project. But uh, on the side, I've done a lot of work on non-Islamic extremists, and particularly over the past five years or so. Uh, each year I've seen a steady increase in the types of threats from white nationalists, from neo-Nazis, and, and really just right-wing extremists, and even left-wing extremists as well. And I fear that what we're headed for is essentially a war of the extremes, with each one fueling each one. And by carrying out this attack, according to the manifesto, this terrorist said he wanted to basically break the United States apart, that he believed that our politics had, and racial divides and the things that we disagree over had become so toxic that it was now possible to split the United States according to those disagreements. So he's also anti-American. I saw anti-Semites spreading this around. Uh, and he's anti-democratic, but I need to correct one narrative that's out there. Yes, he did say he supports Trump as a symbol of white nationalism, but the very next sentence he says, in terms of being a leader and a policymaker, he asks, do I support Donald Trump? Oh, God, no. W right. Why isn't that being covered? Uh, Ryan, one of the things that, uh, that has come out is that apparently this uh, alleged shooter used uh, 8chan, which is a dark side of the web, and he was encouraged in real time, apparently, by Americans to carry out this attack. How uh, important is the Internet in terms of feeding this radicalization, regardless of what your viewpoint may be? Right. Well, the, it's essentially the new meeting house. I mean, in the old days, decades ago, you would have terrorists that would have to find safe houses that would meet face to face. Um, you would have to find someone that thought like you did. Now, in a second, you can find someone that thinks like you do and share information um, and encourage each other and radicalize each other. And that's happening on the Internet uh, every single day. And the trends that I'm seeing is that uh, these supposed lone wolves, even among the white supremacists and, and the neo-Nazis, are becoming more connected. Uh, so it's not just a, a few random people that believe in this. It, it, internationally, they're talking to each other. They're m increasingly networking. And that's the same type of trend that you saw with ISIS and Al Qaeda types. And those also would be unfairly characterized as lone wolves. It, the lone wolf thing doesn't exist. You are talking about radical movements. Ryan Morrow, national security analyst with the Clarion Project. Ryan, thank you so much. We appreciate it.